Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I am sharing was created for the Coco Vanilla Studio design team and it was inspired by the January 2023 monthly challenge mood board. Now you can see the mood board there in the corner of the screen and this mood board was actually designed by me. So the layout I'm going to be creating is a mixed media boy page and I'm going to be working with the fabulous No Limits collection. I'm also going to be working with some Distress Oxides and I'm also going to be working with some acrylic paint. Now there were a number of images from that mood board that inspired me and the first one that I'm starting with was the image of the family jumping up in the air on the beach. Now this was obviously shot at sunset and the image was the family sort of silhouetted against the background. So I've drawn my colour inspiration from that background which is using that warm sort of yellow orange tones in the background and contrasting that with some bold black. So you can see that I have used the Distress Oxide first and I just combined that with a bit of water on my messy mat and then I applied it to my cardstock using my wide number four brush which is one of my favorite brushes and I've just towel dried that off. It dried very very quickly. It didn't really take much drying time at all and then I've used my brayer to apply some black acrylic paint to the bottom of the page. Now when you had a look at that image you could also see a strip across the center of the image which was from the strip of sand that the family were jumping on and this was all also a dark color. So I was inspired by that strip of sand across the center of the photo to add some strips of patterned paper across the center of my page. Now this was not only inspired by the photo but it's also perfect for covering up that line where the watercolor meets the acrylic paint. So you can see that. It leaves the watercolour colour, which is that yellow that I brushed onto the page above the patterned paper, and it leaves the acrylic paint portion of the page below the patterned paper. Now, occasionally you get a few little marks. You can see there's a few little imperfections. Don't worry, they're going to get covered up with embellishments anyway. So I've used that starry print paper, the black starry print paper, which was inspired by that black star print um, pattern that's in the mood board. I've also used a little bit of orange just to help warm things up a bit. Now before I go ahead and stick that patterned paper onto my page I'm going to add another layer to my background. So what I'm using here is another Distress Oxide but I'm using a different technique. So the technique I'm using here I've got a stencil which is that uh, chicken wire pattern stencil. There was no real reason that I chose this pattern. I just liked it and I had to happen to have the stencil nearby. And I'm using a little makeup sponge. So just to dab the color through the stencil over the top of those colors that I've already got in the background. Now this is just to add, to add some extra interest to my page to help add some depth. And you can see that I am actually cleaning my stencil off. So yay me. So there we go. There's some background layers down to start with. Now that wasn't enough background layers for me. Of course I had to add something else in to make it a bit more interesting. So I had to flick through some of my rubber stamps there. You can see I've pulled out that large star stamp because there were lots of stars in that mood board and because the theme is all about celebration. So the title of the mood board is actually Let's Celebrate and I am choosing to celebrate friendship with this layout. So the photo that I'm actually working with is a photo of my sons and some of their friends and it was snapped by one of the other mums recently and they were all hanging out on their scooters together and it was just a fun photo. So I wanted to celebrate their friendship with their mates with this page. Now you can see that I have added my stamping to my background there. So I stamped that large star stamp and then I had a smaller stamp that's called Sky of Stars background. Both of those rubber stamps are from Viva Las Vegas stamps and I just used those to add that bit of extra interest to the background and to also pull that black colour up into the upper portion of the page. So once I was happy with all of that stamping and where it was going to sit and where my photo was going to sit, I went ahead and I stuck that patterned paper strip across the centre of the page. 
Now you'll note that I did use my T square for this because I did want that to sit as the you know the main anchor point for the page. I did want that to sit level on the page. Now I'm going ahead and finding another pattern paper here just to use as a papery layer in behind my photo. And you can see I've also chosen a paper doily from my stash just to add some extra interest in those layers behind the photo as well. Now the edges of those pattern papers, you'll see that I have torn them. Now this is something that I do very regularly. Um, and the reason I do like to tear my papers and not necessarily have straight edges all the time it just adds that texture and that visual interest to your page it allows me to sort of crinkle up the edge away from the page because I do like elements that come up off the page and that they are not necessarily sitting flat and I do love those textural elements on a page so the next thing that I am looking for here is obviously uh, a title for this page. I wanted to make sure it was going to fit. I wanted to make sure that I didn't run out of room on this page for where I was going to put it. So I'm just rifling through that pack of die cut title words there. I had a few words out on the page because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to go with. And I had to work out also where my journal card was going to go. So you can see I've chosen that card um, that says News Flash at the top. This came from the uh, pocket card pack and I was planning on handwriting my journaling on this one to tie in with the handwritten quote that's on the board. I wanted a handwritten element on this page and I wanted it to be fairly prominent. So I decided to use that card right alongside my photo there, right in the focal area of the page, just to allow that element to shine. So given that I had so much going on right in the focal area of this page, I decided to run with my title along the bottom edge of the page there. But when I was looking at it there, I didn't like that there was such a large gap between the focal area of the page and where the title was going to sit. Now you can see that I already did have some stenciling over the top of that acrylic paint that sort of drew the eye down towards the title, but it wasn't enough. So that was why I chose that extra piece of the white patterned paper there that's got the little crosses on it. And I tore a little piece of that and then tucked it in, in underneath those existing layers. And you can see I've torn it into a point which helps draw the eye down to that title. And it just connects those elements. I just didn't want them sitting apart on the page. I like for things to connect. So once I was happy with those paper layers there I was happy that my title was going to be connected to that focal area of my page I went back to those layers behind the photo I was adding in some frayed gauze again to add another textural element to the page I knew exactly where my journal card was going to sit although I hadn't written on it at this point in time and I was happy with how the title was going to look sitting underneath so I went ahead and stuck that down now you can see again I'm using my T-square for this. I don't use my T-square for every element on my page because I'm not that OCD about things being entirely straight all the time. Um, but for, for elements like this, I do like to use it just to make sure that they do sit straight on the page. So you can see that I've taken that card off camera. I've added my handwritten journaling to it. And you can see I've also added some scrap cardboard to the back of that photo. Now this cardboard just came from a cardboard box that I cut up. It was probably a pizza box that I got at an order or one of my design team kits in. I've added a couple of pieces of that to the back of the photo and I've just used an adhesive. That's a Helmer 450 there uh, to stick it down on top of those other layers I always use this cardboard behind my photos because I just like that extra layer of separation that helps bring the photo to the forefront of the page. So that was all of my main elements in place, my background layers, my pattern paper layers, my journal card, my photo, my title. So now it was time to embellish my page. Now I went ahead and pulled out this scrap of this starry print paper that I had um, this was also from the No Limits collection and I just fussy cut some of the stars that would work with the colour palette that I was using. So I was looking for greys, blacks and warm tones like orange and yellow just to tie in with that colour palette. 
I cut a few different stars out in various sizes and it was my intention to sort of place them around the page using that visual triangle method that I do tend to lean towards. So you can see those three stars. If you join the dots between those three points, you will see that my photo falls within that triangle and that helps draw attention to the main focal point of your page. So I've got the die cut ephemera kit there and I am rifling through to pull out some more pieces that are going to work on this page. You can see I've pulled out some more stars there because I really was trying to tie in with that star element. I've pulled out some red ones just to add some little pops of red because there were those little pops of red on the mood board if you noticed in the photo of the fireworks and I wanted to draw that red in slightly. Uh, you can see that I've added the little um, die cut hand there and that was as a nod to the photo on the mood board with the uh, hands with the champagne glasses and I'm also adding an arrow just to help draw the eye into the photo even further. So I did manage to tick off a number of elements from this mood board and sometimes the way that the mood board inspires you might be quite subtle Sometimes it might be quite obvious. Uh, it doesn't matter. However the images in the mood board inspire you to create, that's all that really matters. So um, what am I doing? Oh, I'm adding some foam tape here in behind that arrow because I like some of my elements, as I said, to sit up a little higher on the page. I don't like everything to sit flat all the time. I'm just finding the ideal spots to place all of those stars around my page and I think I go in and finish off with a few more smaller embellishments. I believe a couple of wood buttons and I think I also add some of the puffy stickers from this collection as well. Um, I've also got, you can see the sticker sheet there, that's the accessory sticker sheet from this collection. I'm pulling off some of the little phrase stickers because I always like to balance off my visual elements with a bit of text as well. So that there are things for people to read when they look at your page. So there you go. In the corner there is another look at the mood board. I hope you can see how that image of the silhouettes on the beach has helped inspire my background. You can see my nod to the handwriting. You can see my little nod to the pops of red, the stars. Really, I think I've done a pretty good job at tying all of that in together. I can't wait to see how this board inspires other people. Don't forget to upload your entries into the Coco Vanilla Studio community Facebook group so that you can go in the running for a store voucher before the end of the month. So you've got to get your entries in by the 31st of January. And that's pretty much it. That's how my page came together. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you next time. Until then, bye.